Hey everybody, this is Mark. This is Ashley. And this is Justin. And this is Awkward Fist Bump Productions. Bring it in. Oh. Boom. So we didn't have a guest last week, but we more than made up for it. But before we do that, why don't you awkwardly subs- hit that subscribe button and uh, go ahead and do yourself a favor and keep yourself completely engaged with awesome content every week. If you guys don't know, we've kind of split up our channel a little bit. We have Mental Health Mondays now. We have Prison Cook. I don't even know what to call that for you, Justin. We have Prison Cook awesome Justin. <laughs> Awkward uh, Cooking with Justin. <laughs> and, and then we're also dissecting each 60 Days In participant. So make sure y'all tune in for all the videos and we hope you enjoy it. But for those of you that don't recognize him, even though he's easily recognizable, why don't you introduce yourself, my brother? Uh, me? I'm uh, Ryan. That's it. Uh, <laughs> season two, 60 days in. You may, uh, you may have seen it, maybe, maybe not. So for those of you that did see it, which I would say would make up a substantial number of our own viewers, this is Ryan. Like it, Garza Ryan. Well, not Garza Ryan, but Gar- Ryan and Garza, <laughs> season two, Clark County, former army medic, highly educated, just bona fide, good looking guy to top it off. So we decided we would bring him here so you guys could enjoy the interview. So, Ryan, let's get into it, brother. So you were unlike the rest, uh, you know, the the later years participants. You had no idea what 60 Days In was. So how did this whole process start for you as far as getting on the show? Uh, I was trying to I was trying to max out the uh a police officer exam, trying to get a perfect score. And I was researching other people who got perfect scores. I stumbled across a, a social experiment, basically. Uh, and I clicked on it. It sounded very cryptic, but I thought it would be very good for a resume. Uh, and I fully intended on becoming a, a homicide detective at the time. Didn't know what I wanted to do, but I did know I want to solve um, really serious crimes, um, you know, take bad guys off the streets. And um, so I, I didn't think anything of it and they keep jerking me around. You know, I don't know what, I don't know what to do. So apparently I'm talking to, I'm talking to the crew well before season one people even got dropped in. So we're getting all recruited about the same time. They don't tell me that they're lying to me a little bit here and there, misleading me, being a little bit secretive. Um, Oh no, you're the only person to, you're the only person we've got going in. It's going to be a documentary. It's going to be real quick and easy. Nothing crazy. I didn't know how TV worked. Never applied to be on a TV show. Never tried. Never cared. I haven't owned a TV in something like 12 years. I don't know how it works. Didn't know what to look for. Other people did. And you'll see that on seasons one and, you know, other other seasons that they, they can see through it. I had no idea. I don't know what I'm looking for. So as it keeps getting deeper and deeper, uh, it's an interesting thing because they keep revealing a little bit more here and there. And so. I never thought anybody would see this stuff. I could, it blows my mind that you guys are what seasons, you know, five and six respectively. It's mm-hmm. uh, I had no idea that it would ever get to a point where um, five years later, people from Ireland at 3 a.m. would be sending me hate mail. <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting mm-hmm. thing. That is that is the weirdest thing is. And I know we talked about a little bit. Uh, this week, Ashley, I think it was on mm-hmm. a Reddit. I'm not, I don't remember how we talked about it, but I'm it's, am- sure. it's amazing how, how really this is a, a worldwide phenomenon. And, and, and as mm-hmm. Ryan said it, man, we get hate mail from, I, I think I've gotten it from every continent so far. The love far outweighs, I, I get, pl- I get plenty of positive messages, but it's, yeah. I think it's, the, the hate mail is funnier because it's always just one off stuff. And then you're like, okay, dude, <laughs> just move on with your day. <laughs> I think it's funny, um, personally. I had a guy yeah. hit me up on Instagram the other day, and I guess he must have just started the season because he looked me up and he said, there's no way you're making it to 69 days. And I almost answered him and said, yep, you're right. I would, I'm not going to make it 69 days. 60 days, though, I might. But <laughs> I just decided not to answer it. But uh, yeah. but okay. So Originally, it was called The Project. 
Really? The project. Yeah. The project, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and all of the stuff that I signed, this is another thing, you know, we may get to it at some point, but like uh, people are like, you were there to snitch. Nothing in my contract said tell on this dude. <laughs> nothing, nothing yeah. not a single thing. Uh, so um, I, th- I think it's, uh, I think the whole thing is interesting. As you said, it's like uh, something that gets spread, but the people that, hate on it or hate you for some manipulated uh you know caricature of of yourself you you got to start learning that they aren't hating or even loving you mm-hmm. they're admiring or observing something on a screen that's 80 percent accurate but that 20 percent starts to matter after a while mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah speaking of snitching my favorite um hate gram i got was somebody sent me a message on instagram with like pictures of rats and snakes like just what? rat and snake emojis it was like you're a snitch These people think a like, snitch is and i'm like well actually yes professionally i am in law enforcement so i do yeah. get paid to snitch on the daily so yeah, we're actually, cops. thanks <laughs> actually justin question for you yes do sir you find it to be snitching okay so it's like kind of 50 50 like we want like i like the show because you know i want them to better the prison and and county judicial system and the jails and so like they they have to have a way to go in there and figure it out because if they just come in there and ask us i mean we'll tell them a few things but there's a lot of stuff we're not going to tell them so yeah you know it's good that they put y'all in there and to try to figure it out from the inside but and then i forget what season it was um there like where the girl was like she was writing kites why she was in there oh this person think or this person has drugs and i'm like i don't think that's what season three maury no maury not. did it and then brooke did it in season yeah, five brooke. okay that's what i remember brooke. Well, brooke brooke sent the one about the shank and yeah. the the uh, yeah so, but hold on before before you see you, you you comment any any faster my response to you would be out of all the participants in the history of the show how many how many, and, and you at home think about this for a minute, how many have actually ever snitched? Yeah. Define and, and snitching, audience. I'm going to say snitching. How many participants have intentionally tried to take away somebody's release date yeah. by providing information on them to jail staff with the intent of depriving them of freedom? That's yeah, how I, don't I know. Define. I think it could be even looser than that, just yeah. being on the show, on camera willingly and engaging in other people you're technically uh engaging and snitching to some people so it depends on how everyone every one of the inmates whose face appears signed a waiver to be filmed yeah. so yeah. At, at the same time and again how much... i was really i was really involved in this though and i still didn't know half of what was going on <laughs> so that that gets tricky i don't know um no. i will say though that I am known for, quote, not snitching. Yes. And yet people will get mad at me for not snitching and yet <laughs> hate on everybody else and call them a snitch for snitching. It's a weird kind of, it's, it's a yeah. weird thing that people do. Yeah. yeah, but I agree with you in that situation, though, because the timing, it was not appropriate for you to divulge any information to the sheriff. After the fact, yes, but at the time of you still being incarcerated, I didn't feel like it was appropriate for you to mention anything that was going on inmate related in the pods at the well, time. Here, here's how that ran. I'll go ahead and go into it because it's a common question I get is, you know, people are like, oh, you didn't snitch. You didn't roll. You didn't play ball. <laughs> no, I didn't play ball. And it's mostly because I was getting in with these people. They like me and I like them. They're good people in there. Gars is a mm-hmm. good guy. Wes was a mm-hmm. good guy. Skeeter Lee, good guys. They were all my bunkmates. Very good people. Mm-hmm. And they have, unbeknownst to me, these bash units in the cells. You can hear and see everything. So they come up to me after a while. They say, hey, so we heard you over, uh, you know, overheard this conversation you had with your bunkmate Garza about, uh, you know, how to get out. And we heard him say this. And we heard him say that. And I said, sounds like you got everything you need then, huh? They're like, <laughs> well, we'd like you to elaborate on it. I was like, uh, what do you need me? You have everything that you need on camera. <laughs> if you wanted to do something, if you want to do something, you have everything that you need. You don't need, need me to gossip like a high schooler about other mm-hmm. people's business on camera 
and, and destroy their lives for no reason. You can destroy their lives if you want to. That's not what I signed up for. And that's actually very, very true. How many times were we pulled into the confessional booth and they said, hey, this happened. Talk about it for a minute. Hold on. What 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 am I going to really provide? You know what happened. I mean, in, in fact, sometimes I was and and I'm not trying to you know air too many dirty details, but but I, I know there was one or two times where I got pulled in. Like, do you know what what this is? I have no idea. Okay, well, this is what this is. So talk about it for a second. Hold on. I have no idea what you're even asking me to talk about. And say so, that statement seven different ways, by the way. Oh yeah, and say that. <laughs> Hey, you laugh, Justin, but the oh, three of it. us know. No, I believe like, it. Like, it, it was almost suspicious the amount of time we were kept in those interview rooms because, you know, they would interview people. I mean, they interviewed the entire inmate population, not just participants. So it didn't look mm-hmm. like they were singling anybody out. But towards the end of ours, I'd be gone for like an hour, an hour and a half. And they're yeah. like, you sure were gone a long time, bro. We just talked about different stuff. I guess they like me, you know. So that that I becomes part of your own cover story. You got to figure out how am I going to cover the fact that I was just gone for two hours. Yeah, because yeah. I know, like, if I was in, that would be asking questions. Like I know you were asked a lot of questions, and the sheriff even was talking to you about how many questions they're going to talk to you about and ask you. And um, you know, the the guy that you your roommate, you know, he was like, "That's just how we do it. Like we just." ask questions we try to fill out the people are, yeah. are we comfortable being around them you know what are they good people are they kind of weird you know like can it's i buy a house them? Like, mm-hmm. it's their house you're yeah. invading I, their house i feel like very very much a similar sense of fear and a sense of unknown between everybody participant or actual inmate alike like you go in there and participants yeah we're nervous because we don't know these people we don't want to know If they're violent, we don't know, like, I mean, we're all very naive to the situation. A lot of the inmates in there who have committed crimes, like nonviolent crimes, just maybe some minor drug possession or something, they're probably on that same level of nervousness and they're filling you out for their own peace of mind, not to try to. And that's the thing. Where do we, where do we get our, our ideas of what incarceration is like? Where do we get these ideas? We get them from from the the media. We get them from movies like Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. And for the, all four of us, we can honestly sit, sit here and say there are people that are incarcerated in America today that are really and 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 Ryan hit it right on the head. They are good people. Yes, they yeah. messed up. They broke they broke a law. They're 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 paying their debt to society. But at the end of the day, it's not a bunch of people trying to take your cherry, uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, in the shower, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, um, in fact, someone asked me, golly, I think it might have been at work today. They said, is 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 Jill really as sex driven in the mail pod as, as, as it's made out to be? And I oh, actually, I was asked in an interview yesterday. That's what it was. I was interviewed for the, for Jody Rollins, big brother. And she asked me on her <laughs> podcast. She says, it really overtly that sexual there? I said, I can't speak to all facilities. I can't speak to all pods. But what I can speak to is pod 200 at Pinal County. (laughs) And it wasn't. It was not as bad as Shawshank Redemption portrays it out to be or shows like Lockdown. But But speaking of sex, I want to ask Ryan about this in particular because this is one of the biggest things that always pops up in Reddit, Twitter, Facebook discussions. Ryan's participation in, I'm going to say the sexual harassment of Brian or Ryan's viewing Ooh. of the sexual harassment of Brian. Yeah. So what oh, are your thoughts okay. on that as far as well, that um, goes? First off, everybody gets hazed. I got hazed. They never aired it. Okay. Everybody mm-hmm. gets hazed. Some worse than others. Obviously, I didn't get hazed in the way that Brian did. So mm-hmm. when, how, you guys have a rule on your show, though, not to talk about politics, don't you? We can discuss Ooh. gently as long as it's yeah. not. No, like, I was just saying, like pod screw, politics is. Screw the other side. No, pod, no, politics, pod politics is fine. Is fine. Okay. Yeah, okay. we're just not going to bash, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you go in to Clark County facility at least. Pro- with jails, facilities in general, there are universals and particulars, right? So there are universals. You're going to come in with the same amount of kit 
and gear as everyone else. You're going to have the same schedule. They're universals. There are guards. There, there's chow, right? There, there are these things. And then there are particulars. Uh, where are you going to sleep on the floor? Uh, what type of chow do they have there? What's on their commissary items list? So there are universals and particulars that you have to operate in each one. Brian came in and he didn't understand the particular layout of CCJ enough to know, get out of the open. Mm -hmm. And there was not enough room under other places like stairs and against other walls and back against other places. So it's not his fault. Brian made some, you know, decent moves when he came in. He, he just doesn't fit in, which is a good thing. It's a, it's a good thing yeah. if you don't fit in in jail, contrary to what people think. <laughs> OK. Mm -hmm. And um, so Brian comes in and they're like, oh, this guy looks like a green newbie. Like he, this mm -hmm. guy's just fresh and they start messing with him and he just takes it so like okay well we can play you know uh poker with another deck of cards missing one card again for the 700th time or we can mess with the new guy right <laughs> so they start doing it and it just keeps escalating and nobody is doing it in a way that is like spitting on their hands and rubbing them together and like how can we cause damage to this man's holes today <laughs> nothing nothing of the sort ever <laughs> ever occurred they're just like man how much is this dude gonna take where he pushes us off like that's when he gets the respect they want you to push them honestly mm -hmm. they, they kind of want a bit of it because they know what they're doing they kind of see that they deserve it if they did it to each other they'd hit each other probably so it's just mm -hmm. it's a hazing thing and it, it got to a point with brian where i said I saw Brian out there and I said, hey, guy, you know, I didn't know who he was. Hey, you want to come up here and talk to me real quick? And he had heard from the sheriff, don't go upstairs. All the heavy hitters are upstairs. Don't ever go upstairs. All the dangerous guys are right where I'm staying. I'm a dangerous guy in Brian's eyes now. And he thought, no, I don't want to talk to this guy. He thought he think when he saw me at the reunion, he thought that I was like a hardened criminal until I got there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> stuff never aired, but. He was never in actual danger of sexual harassment. Yes, it looks bad. Yeah, it was no, just a hazing thing. It. Just like yeah. in law enforcement or in the military, like the new guy mm -hmm. or new girl, I guess, always gets hazed. You know, I mean, the three of us understand. The three of us understand. Come on. I don't mean sexual, but I'm talking about hazing in general. <laughs> Weren't you ever sent to Kim Light Batteries or a box of grid squares? No, because no, my, I dad guarantee was, Ryan my dad was military, so it never, nobody ever targeted me like that. Now, when I was in high school, I was sent to go find the batter's box. Um, the there, you the batter's box. there you go. So, so I had to that's go what I'm to saying. Every, Everybody, yeah. every group, every organization oh, oh, oh. has some type of, so you're, what I'm getting off of this, Ryan, is it wasn't necessarily that he was any, in any overt danger. Uh, I'll, I'll he he like was this. just me messing with the new guy. I'll put it like this. There are very few guys that are doing three months in county that are like, you know what? That dude over there is looking pretty good today. <laughs> it's all voluntary. And in fact, yeah. something that something that's interesting, I've heard some stories. Homosexuality is largely frowned upon in overly masculine settings such as military and even jail. Contrary to popular opinion, I've heard so much. There's a guy named Big Herc. Uh, that was telling yeah. a story one time. I love Big Hurt. Yeah, 912 uh, or something like that? Huh? From California? Yeah, yeah, Big yeah. Hurt. Yeah, yeah, prison talk. Channel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, so he was telling a story about, so there's this connected made guy, and he's, you know, heading the charge of this, you know, white people's gang or what, you know, ABs or something, dudes high up in the, in, in the, the ranks. And some dude comes in, some Indian guy or some, I forgot what he said, doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, so he's like, this dude comes in and they start hitting it off. And then eventually people can hear, as Big Herc says, some get, uh, some cheeks getting busted. And uh, so, <laughs> so the gang comes up to this guy and they're like, listen, we don't roll like that. We don't want the image of being ruled by people like you. You need to step down. Or we're going to do something about you that you're not going to like, basically. And the dude just did his time quietly from there on. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not it's largely voluntary and it's not it's not uh, it's frowned upon in general. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I'll say. So contrary to what people say about people getting 
uh, all this stuff going on. Most people are just going to hit the showers if you get me. Uh, it's so. It's so yeah, different it's, with women. Sexual relationships and the women's side hope. is very highly encouraged. It's very like very out in the open, like. They will fist fight you over girlfriends. I mean, it's very much like very touchy feely. Everybody always wants to touch each other. But I would rather feel. get shanked by a Colgate toothbrush than be touchy feely for sixty days. Yes, <laughs> it's very different for women. It was golly, it was there was so much sex going on in in Etowah County Jail. With, wow. Yeah, but now. Man, now- Pinal County Pod 200 zero sex. Just in case you were wondering, <laughs> just just I just want to clarify that. Yeah. In closing, though, um, Brian's a good guy, and we have a lot of respect for each other. We talk. We're friends. He's good. He knows that the editing is misleading. I'm not sitting there trying to clown on him and justify things. He knew that they were being harmless, but it got to a point where. Um, Brian is a very successful, intelligent, just he's just a smooth guy when you really talk to him, when you when he's not in some situation where he's nervous about how he's going to look on camera. Dude's cool. And, you know, he. um, I don't think I don't like that he got, you know, that. People are going to know him for that. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. I I think that's I think that's unfortunate because uh, he had so much more to offer. You know. And after doing sixty days in, I've I've noticed that you're just gonna have the people that are that look good and the people that look bad, and unfortunately, in a lot of the cases, people are frowned upon, uh, whether it be Brian, David, you know, and 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 of course, there's plenty of others, and and I think it's it's almost an unfair shake to judge someone for years based on something that they did when they were stressed out for, you know, they may oh. have made a bad one bad decision. That was over in 60 seconds, but that one bad decision is going to be replayed over and over and over. Well, the thing is about Brian. Okay, so he was getting threatened by some guys that don't care to do a little extra time. And that's how he saw it. And in my opinion, Brian is a grown man with a lot to lose. Why would he be like, yeah. you know what? Some dude in Nebraska at 4 a.m. is going to not like me too awful much on his couch today. Time for me to fight this inmate for clout. Yeah. He's a lawyer. <laughs> like it, yeah. th- th- That dude won bigger. Okay, I stayed the full time. Okay, cool. That dude was eating steak and sleeping in a king-size bed while I was miserable in Seapod in a sewage incident. That dude won big time compared to me. As far as I'm concerned, <laughs> that that's actually a very good point because you know the the people that judge a show, and we're not talking bad about you, listeners. We're talking about the people that talk bad, uh, but you know that that tr- especially go out of their way to troll. Is y'all have come over six seasons, well seven seasons, because I will and throw Narco Land in there, even though it was an offshoot. They've come to mm-hmm. expect how it's it's more now. Is it a show about, and, and, and I'm not saying it's one way or the other, is it a show about entertainment value now, or is it a show about changing the system? And I think it changed the way you watch, me. the way you view that, you know, 60 days in the TV show is how you want to be entertained. So you make the conscious decision, am I doing it to help the system, or am I watching the show because I want to see what happens to Mark and Abner because David, <laughs> you know, ratted them out? I mean, mm-hmm. it's 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 um, the unfortunate side effect of 60 Days In, and I'm not bashing 60 Days In, but they have mm-hmm. to keep it entertaining to an extent if they want to keep it a reality show that goes multiple mm-hmm. seasons. But mm-hmm. see, some people have a legacy uh, as far as the show goes. Like mm-hmm. people like Robert made the editors be like, okay, well that makes the ratings box move up a tad. Yeah, uh, let's mm-hmm. glorify this type of stuff. Then they have character tropes, character arcs, where somebody has to, like, I had a character arc compared to real life, for example, where everybody has to be uh, somewhat good and bad uh, at all times for them to be Mm -hmm. like, okay, well, I would like to go this direction with this guy because he's not playing games. (laughs) Uh, He's not playing our games. So certain things, they they can make anyone look good or bad, I assure you. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I agree with with that. that. You're talking about people trolling, and it's like, Nowadays, everybody has an opinion and they just it's so easy just to type something and just shoot it. And it's like 
if you've never been to that situation, why are you talking about it? Because if you've never been to jail and you mm-hmm. don't know how hard it is and the things that you actually go through, like, why are you trolling? Like, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, because, I mean, I don't understand it. It's, nowadays, people are just so easy to say something, but it's like, man, you've never been through jail. You've never been through prison. You ne- You may have never been hazed before and different things like that. So it's like, you don't know what you're talking about. You're just like, shooting out stuff that you don't even know what you're you're speaking on. But I I don't think it's necessarily limited to 60 days in. I think if you put yourself in the public eye, no matter what show it is, you're going to get hate, period. So unfortunately, like, I didn't know that I was putting myself in the public eye like that, though. Like, I it wasn't a TV show when I signed up. So, like, other people, like, Mark, uh, you know, Ashley, your, your contracts were probably a little bit stricter because of me as well. Like, I mean, things were different when I started. Like, I, I kind of pushed the system a bit. And uh, so <laughs> apologies if it was excessively strict on you guys because of my, uh, you know, we'll have uh, to resisting plan, the system. We'll have to plan a secret um, meeting where we all bring our contracts to the party and see how much mm-hmm. it's evolved. That would be fun. I, I thought it's changed so much. They probably just added a couple more really clear words to scare you into not wanting to lose your money for the rest of your life or something. Yes, they did. Yeah. <laughs> I know there, Let's was, see. there was one that was very, oh, I can't even say it. There were so many very specific things. Like, oh my gosh. Well, the interesting I, thing is uh, you can't discuss trade secrets. That's an interesting one. Which mm-hmm. trade secret at the end of the day could really be a broad term that could it is, which is why could, I discussed things yeah, that they exactly. do on editing. Yeah. Uh, which mm-hmm. technically means if we even say the word sixty days in, technically they've got grounds to to do something to us. But you know, I look at it like this. First of all, our show's j- relatively positive for sixty days in, and I think I let's be honest. Production knows that we have this channel. If they didn't like it, I'm sure they would have copyright struck this channel and we'd be gone by now. But I look at it like Robert had a YouTube video that he posted at the end of season one. And if producers didn't go after him, then we're pretty safe. Yeah, We're we're discussing trade secrets with hearts of gold. Like, just... (laughs) We're lovingly discussing the process. And you guys already know, like, I, I've drank the Kool-Aid. Like, I'm a super believer in 60 Days In. I, I love the program. I will defend it to the death of me. The good that it has brought to these small county jails. Just my season, especially with Etowah County, the good that it brought the community. I will defend that all day long. I don't care what people say about me anymore. I don't care about the trolls. I don't care about the hate. At the end of the day, we were able to get thousands of dollars worth of bras, panties, socks, whites, mm-hmm. boxers, to in, indigent inmates who needed them, who didn't have family. So, I mean, just the human right to panties, like, I mean, that's that still blows my mind. Like, just little things like that, body scanners to prevent weapons and drugs coming in. Like, I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. So, yes, is there an entertainment factor to it? Yes, people are going to love to watch it and love the drama. But the good that it does heavily outweighs any type of bull crap in my book and that's my that's my sense on it (laughs) i think that the i think the show has uh the original intent from what i understand when i got involved what i thought it was going to be is a lot more focused on um i was going to go in and just get in and teach the production people how to go from zero to veteran in 60 days as much as one can in 60 days Mm -hmm. So the whole thing was, this is how this works out. These are these philosophical breakdowns of this. The pod politics works like this. The economics is this. uh, These tips when you get into the drunk tank. is So so all these things that I I, I spit on, they don't even touch it. They just Mm -hmm. tater tot fight over here. uh, Oh, this guy got slapped. And I think that the the layout, the politics of jail is probably my favorite thing from the series because regardless of whether or not – You know, anything meaningful changes, which in Clark County it did. Jamie Noel did a fantastic job. Um, Mm -hmm. But like, regardless, I learned quite a bit about the world. It's it's an entire world, uh, you know, jail is. And any facility you go to, as I said earlier, they're going to be universals and particulars. 
Um, so like in the place that I was in, they had e-cigs and stuff like that. Those are worth big money. Other places don't have stuff like that. So it's a big money item there. What's the hundred dollar bill there if you had to go? So you can learn all these things as you go. And then you get out in the real world and people were angry because they scuffed their brand new iPhone made in China by slave labor. So they're all mad about this stuff. When people in jail, they're fighting over tater tots. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it, 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 these and when you're in jail, you learn so much about like what people are going through. And then you get out in the real world, world and people are spoiled, missing out on stuff, overlooking things. Like I felt bad taking a shower in the hotel when I got out. When, I don't know if they aired this, uh, but I think a big reason they got Nate to do an extra season. When I got out at the end of season two, they weren't doing any more seasons uh, you know, in, in that facility. It was over. The first thing they asked me, how do you feel right now? I said, I feel like I'm not done. The first thing I said when I got in the van, mm -hmm. there are dudes in there that, I mean, they're real good guys. And you, you leave me, you're like, I wonder, I hope that guy gets clean because uh, mm -hmm. his support system outside is just, you know, bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So not to change the subject, but, I, you know, there was something that you, you went through that I've also gone through. And that's the sewage problem when it came up in the dorm and it was overflowing everywhere. Yeah, it gave us all herpes of the olfactory system, if I recall. <laughs> <laughs> so how bad was it? Uh, <laughs> something that I hit a lot of my background from production. Like I came from a rather rough background. Uh, people think I'm some silver spoon rich Ivy League kid or something. I <laughs> couldn't be further from the truth. Um, but I start laughing pretty hard when I'm miserable. And so I spent most of the sewage situation just chuckling about it. It's like, what else are you going to do? Like, it's just a, an instinct. Like, when stuff gets real bad, I just start laughing. It's bad enough that I was laughing the whole time. I'll put it that way. Like, it was um because you couldn't just be like, you couldn't, you wake up in the morning. You're, you're off in a nice breeze. You're, you're sleeping in, in a hammock in the, the middle of a tropical paradise and you're dreaming, you wake up and you're in a, a, a matchbox filled with sewage with a bunch of dudes <laughs> complaining and screaming. You're like, oh man, I want to go back to the dream. That was, a, that was a, an interesting thing. Those people used to talk about uh, waking up in dreams being like, oh, that's right. I'm in jail. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the sewage incident, I guess it's, it lasted a while. I get, okay. So, it's easy for the inmates to forget that uh, the guards have a job to do that isn't catering to their every need when that stuff, that stuff hits. Mm -hmm. So I get the short staffing. I get a lot of the stuff that they were going through the, on the officer side. But frankly speaking, um, there were improvements to me be made. And I don't think I have to say much more. Um, you know, there's a, there's a quote from my season. I feel, you know, in, in some ways bad about saying it. Um, but I was like, you know, I don't care if I'm the janitor, if a guy's throwing up blood, you need to get him to the hospital. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's just how I feel about it. And not <clears throat> everybody feels that way. You have plenty of people wanting to apply to the show right now that thinks that people should rot and die in facilities, even if they haven't been, uh, you know, uh, convicted or something. You have varying degrees of my personal stance is there were some improvements that needed to be made. And uh, it's hard to prepare for stuff like that, in all fairness. But it was bad. But may, may I venture as far as to say it's good to get those type of people on the show because, you know, they they come on the show with one mindset. And, and recent uh, recent history suggests to me, like my season, it would have been Brooke. Brooke came on and she was like, if you deserve to go to, if you, if you break the law, you deserve... And getting those type of people is not necessarily a bad thing because we all know, to an extent, I was kind of the same way. Even though I, they didn't portray me that way, you, you do the crime, you do the time. Part of the reason why I did the show was because Justin, and if you know, for those of you, like the three people that might watch this episode that don't realize it, he's my brother-in-law. <laughs> and so I came from a, a background of military, corrections officer, and so... My my mindset was kind of a little bit of the same thing, but it's great to see that because these people, you know, like for me, it was Brooke, 
you know, they get to see the other side and they come out with a much more favorable opinion of changing the criminal justice system for the better. Yeah, so, I mean, like, like Quentin, Quentin uh, from my season, season two, mm-hmm. in my opinion, one of the all time greats. He doesn't get the credit mm-hmm. he deserves, and it's because he did his job to the T. The man sat back, did everything that they wanted him to do, gave them the harshest criticism they could possibly imagine. And walked away and does cool stuff every day. I talked to him for two hours today, Quentin. I talked to him <laughs> like two, three hours a week, easy, all the time. And uh, yeah, he's he, he's a solid guy. You know, there are a lot of solid people that have come from this show, and mm-hmm. some of them are cops, and some of them are hardliners uh, that you know mm-hmm. want people to rot. A lot of times, those opinions change. Mm-hmm. I changed my opinion on stuff, but I was always more of a. Uh, I think that only the harshest people should really be priority for. Uh, police. So uh, for my thing, when I get in and I see two dudes doing the same amount of time as me for getting in a fist fight that was misunderstood, and then they have problems getting their lawyer to do something, it's such rough to see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So speaking of law enforcement, you you stated when you um, you got on the show because you had a desire for law enforcement. And then at the reunion, when Dan Abrams asked you, Ryan, do you still want to be in law enforcement? Your answer was so harsh. No, I do not. Yeah. Like, yeah. What, what was the moment for you that you changed your mind? While I was in jail still. When I was in jail, I was like, I don't want to do this stuff anymore. Like, you're, you're telling me that I don't get to write the laws that I think are nonsense. I have to enforce them for several years to even qualify to be a homicide detective. So that's, the, mm-hmm. that's, that's what I'm picking up is that I need to enforce laws I don't personally agree with. I don't want to lock up a dude for a blunt. I don't. I don't think anyone should be. I don't. I think that we should be hitting up the harder stuff. Homicide is pretty hard, but still, I'm. I'm, I'm it's just one of these things where to be a beat cop, you're doing, in my opinion, at, at least for me. I found out that the problems. If you want to create change, it's not. Uh, it, it, it's not uh, some generic platitude about. Oh, we need change. Oh, we need to we need the hopey changey stuff. We need to do all the that's not what it is. It's all political nonsense that you have to bribe people about. Most problems mm-hmm. that we need to solve in this, they're political. They're not mm-hmm. with law enforcement. It's not enforcing laws better. It's it's about what we deem illegal and what the cops have to enforce or they suck at their job. I don't mm-hmm. want to suck at anything I do ever. And I think that I'd be a terrible police officer because I'm gonna look the other way a lot. Mm-hmm. Just to maintain then- honor. And that's fair. That's fair of you to say that because it, it is it's not for everybody because I also want to be a detective and I've been a beat cop working the streets for over seven years now. And just last month, I went to investigator school. The, the amount of time you have to put in to get to that point takes takes a, a terribly long time. So I, I do respect you for choosing not to go down that path. And and that's the great thing that I see among a lot of participants is you got people that want to be cops. You got cops that are doing the show. You got COs. And, you know, it's interesting to see where we all come after our journeys. And, you know, for Mm -hmm. example, uh, season uh, four. uh, And I I can see him, but I can't. He was a cop in Texas. John? uh, No, not John. No, not John. I don't know why for the life of me. I can't remember. I want to call name. him Ryan. It wasn't no. Ryan. No, 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 no. <laughs> Alan. The, the Alan. Four? Alan. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, Alan was a cop, and after doing the show, he's like, no, this isn't for me anymore. I can't do it. And it's great. It, it's great to see where the different mindsets of people go after the show. For me, it strengthened my resolve to work, work in law enforcement again. Same. Um I mean, yeah, I mean, it's so I, for I didn't me, come out viewing law enforcement negatively or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah, said yeah. it's probably not for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, for those of us that still work in law enforcement, I think at the very least, it's opened our eyes to the point of uh, I still have to enforce the laws, I still have to follow my policy. But there's a lot more compassion, a lot more empathy that we can show than mm-hmm. we probably used to before we did the show. So yeah, see, it's uh, like Hannah Arendt, a uh, philosopher. She wrote uh, some stuff on the Holocaust with like she called it the banality of evil. Uh, and 
you know, evilness can be as simple as, sorry, I was just following orders. I'm an innocent man here. They would have shot me in the head if they would have. So a lot of times people fall into that um, that line uh, of they're just doing stuff even if they think that it's wrong and they think that it absolves them. If you have a problem with what you're doing for a living, you probably shouldn't do it. If Mark and Ashley, you don't have a problem with it, you can justify it in every way. More power to you. I personally would feel miserable being like, I hate what I do and I suck at what I do mm -hmm. because I'm not doing it to the fullest every single, I don't want to do that. If you mm -hmm. guys are excellent officers, which I believe you are, congratulations. We need more of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As far as something as simple as marijuana goes, it's, it's like a state by state, county by county situation. Like for us, I don't, I don't arrest people for a single blunt. That's my officer discretion. I've done this before. I've, I'll do it again. There are times when people absolutely do need to go to jail for possession of marijuana. And there are situations where they don't. And I mean, at our standard across the board is that you are going to receive a citation for drug paraphernalia. Am I going to take you to jail over a seed and some shake? No, I'm not. Am I going to write you a citation to appear in court for drug paraphernalia for the, the bong that you got with you, the wrapping paper and stuff? Yes, because you know it's illegal. You brought it out onto my streets. Doing it in the privacy of your own home where you're safe and you're not impaired is one thing. But once you bring it out onto my streets and you make it my business, it becomes my business. And mm -hmm. there are going to be some some punishments for that. Uh, and that that's how I view like the simple things, little mm -hmm. things like that. And I, I'm not running into people's homes and snatching them out. Oh, you dirty potheads. Look, <laughs> yeah. Get in the paddy well, wagon. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not like that at it, all. You ever heard of the Society of Saints? Society of Saints. Society of, yeah, the Society of Saints is a it's a sociological experiment mm. for criminology where in a society of saints, everyone's perfect. The least perfect among them are still criminals. So so like mm. just even in a world of perfection, the tiniest flaw would be so obvious that it needs mm -hmm. to be shut out. And so it, it, it's an interesting thing because do you think, Ashley or Mark, that mm. marijuana should be legal? Do you think uh, do you think it should be um, decriminalized or federally legalized uh, or, or what? Personally, I'm not allowed to think yeah, about I'm, that. If you're not allowed, it's fine. I, just, I probably uh, can't discuss it for departmental policies. It's fine. Yeah. That that being said, yes, I think I think you know. I mean, we're seeing uh, we're upon a season where we're seeing a lot of like CBD oils are coming out. You know, and and I'm thinking I'm seeing in the next 20 years, my prediction would be they're probably going to legalize it across the United States just because you're seeing that push there now. Um, have well, you heard of, of that, Portland? I think Portland, they legalized yeah, everything. Basically. Everything. I'm yeah. so of an opinion of that that I will not speak of. I wonder but, if they uh, um, banned Narcan. <laughs> Narcan is so important. Narcan is so important to have. It's such a tool. Have you ever seen somebody receive a Narcan, um, like I, we had them like shots? Have you ever seen somebody receive Narcan who was in a midst of an overdose? Yeah, they shoot it's straight a, up. It's amazing. It's it's life changing. But but get we're getting like so far off yeah, topic because I like, could I could talk about this for hours. But um, one one last thing regarding your journey in jail in Clark County, Indiana, before we dive into where is our beloved Ryan at now, five years later, your relationship with Garza, that's one of the most important topics, one of the most important things that's happened in 60 days in history is the friendship that you formed and the trust that you two had with each other. So can you elaborate on that situation for us? Yeah, I'll know about the most important things ever. Yeah, me and Garza no, were cool. No, it's up there. It's up yeah, there. I mean, it's super important. I don't understand why people like Listen, me and Garza are cool. We like each other. But there was no, quote, bromance stuff going on. This is just you're seeing like us interacting time and time. You know, I didn't want to roll on the guy. He's a good guy. I think he deserves better. I think you can talk to some people and you can hear in their just just everything that they are, that they're not changing when they get out. You can tell that a guy's like, oh, man, when I get out, man, I'm going to go get this chick and I'm going to do these other things. I got five hundred million dollars buried in the yard, but I'm here. and I can't afford my bail. You get all these people <laughs> that's doing that stuff. And then you see people like Garza who are just like, oh, a guy that's not just trying to stab people in every day. I'm going to talk to this guy and have a, a cognitive discussion with him. So he started talking to me. We just bounced ideas off each other. And 
I was just somebody that wasn't a meathead in there that he liked to talk to. We were, we were cool. We worked out all the time. Garza is a good guy. Um, I just didn't, uh, here's something they never showed, uh, after, after I left, uh, D pod, uh, Clark County has a lot of programs. They never showed me. I was tricking these programs out. I, I hit up all these programs and like passed the GED on day one and started tutoring people and <laughs> doing all this stuff. And, and, and you know, they never showed this stuff, but even Sheriff Noel was like, man, I wish they would have showed more of the programs. And I agree. I think, uh, I think, um, that type of thing should be pushed more, but, Garza, I remember saying he was in a computer class. So I was like, OK, if you pass the GED class real quick, you can shoot all the way up to the computer class. So after I got out of D-Pod, I switched back over into that computer class and met up with Garza one more time. We just, uh, you know, kind of shot it. He had the he had his fresh surgery on his arm and stuff by then. But but yeah, I mean, he's a he's a good guy and he's gotten out since. And um, he's a successful businessman. We caught up recently. Uh, my phone bricked a long time ago and I lost all the contacts. And I don't have like Facebook or anything like that. So uh, we finally gained contact back and caught back up recently. And now he's doing excellent. He's a successful, he owns a successful business doing real estate and uh, he's married, very happy. Just, I mean, doing, he's doing fantastic. And if people would have only shown clips of, of this guy, anybody that would see him would potentially just dismiss him. On paper, as this guy has these things on his record, we don't trust him, we don't like him. And I'm glad that the cameras got to at least show that there are good, smart people inside that are willing to change given the opportunity. And Garza, I think, is the perfect example of something that can illustrate that, a guy that deserves a chance. And society's all but written them off. And Jamie Noel deserves a lot of credit for, uh, for helping Garza out, too, in my opinion. Uh, he, he, uh, he stuck with him through, through a lot. And um, so I just think that Garza is a good enough guy to hang around while you're inside. It's better than, get, you know, just so we, we both saw that as like um, we were both good company and we worked out. And we had a lot of things in common. And uh, that was about it. I mean, it's it, it's not like we were just like, oh, we're best friends forever. I need to. No, but, we're just cool. We liked each other. But you got to love some of the fan memes. I don't know if you've seen this one. Yeah, but, it's kind of weird. But like, there's uh, a meme that shows you too high looking for, uh, at Garza, and it says, I wish, I wish you know, my you husband man. would look at me like, it I says, wish someone would look man. at me the way Ryan looks at Garza. What that should really say is uh, show show me someone who looks at someone else who's speaking and giving them due respect. I was just looking at the guy. <laughs> like, I'm just like, I'm looking at you guys. It's like, do I admire all of you so <laughs> That is that's well, so one of the cool things about being a 60 days in person, though, is seeing the memes. Like someone went and photoshopped my head onto the movie called Shot Caller. And, you know, if you don't know the, the, the real quick Excellent premise movie. about the movie Shot Caller is it's some local yokel like me that goes in and then he winds up running like the Aryan Brotherhood in that's the entire state life. of California. Oh, oh. <laughs> so it is funny some of the memes but let's go ahead and hit this last topic uh what is ryan doing five years later whatever i want uh <laughs> i read a lot i uh uh after the show i laid low for a while like i said i didn't know this was going to be a show i didn't think anybody was going to see this stuff um and then when i got out i was like oh they had other seasons. Uh, that explains quite a bit why people were on to me when I first got in and all this other stuff is because people were blowing their covers and they didn't tell me. And it's just, <laughs> so people like, oh, Ryan's just, he's not cutting it. It's like, no, I was suspecting because everybody's sucked at their jobs first. It's, but, but no, so uh, after I laid low for a while, I went back into uh, undergrad, studied government. Uh, I, I went back and got some extra, uh, you know, studies uh, in undergrad. Then I got out, took six months off or so. Uh, I had an emergency surgery that didn't go uh, very well, uh, to say the least. I had a rough time. Uh, I got a mm. big three-inch scar across my neck on my jugular here. But, Thanks. but yeah, after that, I started. I was involved in a couple of things. Um, I was just kind of almost interning with local political stuff, just to uh, j- just to see what was going on. And I, I determined I was like. You know, this is not what I want to do. I, I, I rethought everything that I wanted to do with my life. I was like, I could be dead right now. 
And so I just gave up all that stuff and hit books really hard and went to grad school for the past two years where I've been hitting books for 60 hours a week. So like nothing special, like past two, two years, I've been hitting books, studying politics and law for 60 hours a week, nonstop obsessing over it. In fact, it's the only way you can get the 4.0 is if you obsess. <laughs> so so you, do you have your Juris Doctorate? Like, what are you working on? Uh, no, I, I went for the master's degree, uh, grad school. Okay. I, I, oh, wh- what am I going to do after this? I have no yeah. idea. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever I want. I, can, I, tend to, um, I tend to obsess over something, get good at it, then get bored, and then move on to something else that I think challenges me. Oh, you're speaking That's the me. language of my people. Joy's <laughs> always yeah. said that about me. I'll get like wrapped up into something, and then that'll be it. But yeah. So, All right, for our uh, viewers, all I've been doing is, uh, you know, grad school for the past couple of years. Yeah. Well, if anyone wants to reach out to you, do you want to shout out your social medias or anything like that? Uh, try random combinations of my name. I'll probably comment on this video and say hi to everybody. <laughs> there you go. So he will comment if you're a fan. Follow him. Subscribe to him. Show him the the the, the love that Awkward Fist Bump, Bump family shows our well our more memorable guests. Cause he was one of the more memorable guests. I don't know that we'd get that much love if we could interview Robert, but that yeah, would be, but I would pay a lot of money for that moment. I would love to interview him just cause dude, are you like really that crazy? But that's an entirely different, different scenario. But yeah, Ryan, I, mean, uh, I enjoyed myself. I'm uh, glad to come on anytime. Uh, good yeah. talking to all you. Yeah. You will yeah. be back. You, you will, will be definitely back. be back because Actually, we just did a contest, and we have to announce the winner on another a video. And part of that contest was tell us who you want to interview. So a couple of people said they wanted to interview you, my friend. So we're uh, going to have to do this thing, announce the winner. And if you're willing to uh, to jump in on it, then we'll make their dreams come true. <laughs> but we love you guys. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment, interact with us on all our social media pages, all that stuff's in the bottom. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. We love you, brother. Always a friend of the show, and you're always welcome back. We will talk to y'all later. Bring it in. Awkward fist bump, everybody. Yeah. Oh. You too, Ryan. I think it's more awkward if I don't do the fist bump. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, I mean, that, 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 that was works. awkward. That was awkward. Yeah.